an inspiring matriarchy, an account of exile and uprooting, Bye Bye Tiberias is Lina Swalem's latest documentary, zooming in on the story of the Palestinian women in her family, including her mother, actress Hiam Abbas. À chaque fois que je la questionne sur son histoire, elle me répète « N'ouvre pas les douleurs du passé. » Je me demande souvent ce que tu serais devenu si tu étais resté. Qu'est-ce que j'en sais, Yalina, parce que je suis partie. <rire> Lina and Hiam are in the studio to tell us more. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Lina, this documentary takes us to the Sea of Galilee, or the Lac de Tiberias in its French uh, title. This is an important site in various religious texts. In the Bible, they say Jesus walked on water there. But it's also very important to your family, too. Tell us why. Um, it's the, the place that is the source of our story of transmission. It's the place from where my family was expelled in 1948 during the Nakba. And it seems to be the place where everything ended and started at the same time for me in terms of trying to collect the story of this line of transmission of this lineage of women uh, from whom I inherited. Mm. And here, I mean, your uh, focal point in the documentary, as an actress, your job is usually to delve into another character, somebody else. Here, you had to investigate your own past. You were there for it, so you know it well. Was it easy to do? No, it wasn't really very easy. It's As you said, it's much easier for me to kind of like slip in the body and psychology and the, the machine of emotions of someone else that created by the vision of someone else. And here, the difference and the big difference was suddenly to open up to a camera that was, um, was led by my daughter. So uh, the process of first getting to get used to this exercise, which is new for me, to get used to Lena being behind the camera as a woman, as a director, and not as my daughter, <laughs> you know? And at the same time, really say things that are, um, in a way, not something I always, or I never wanted to share, basically, with, uh, with anybody but myself. So for some reason as well she had to think about ways of bringing truth from me uh she used the fact that i am an actress sometimes to kind of like you know put me in a mise-en-scene where i would just act certain parts with certain female characters uh, sisters of mine playing the parts with me it, and all of this was really just like, in a way, a whole process that Lena went through in order to make the whole thing easier for me. Mm, a personal then and professional challenge. So there are four generations, uh, four women here, as I said, uh, Lina, Hiam, uh, but also your grandmother, Nemat, and your great-grandmother, Um Ali. Both of them uh, were forced from their home in uh, Tiberias in 1948 during the Nakba or catastrophe in Arabic, the forced displacement of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians during the creation of the State of Israel. We see both of those women in the film. Let's take a look. Les images d'hier se superposent sans cesse à celles d'aujourd'hui. En me filmant, mon père m'inscrit dans l'histoire des femmes de ma famille. Derrière ces images de l'enfance se cache la réalité d'un lieu menacé de disparaître à tout moment. Ces images sont le trésor de ma mémoire que je ne veux pas laisser échapper. Je sais qu'elle risque, elle aussi, de tomber dans l'oubli. So these women uh, overcame incredible ordeals. Uh, they were, lived in great hardship. You grew up very far away from them. What would you say was their greatest legacy? Uh, I think I always felt very close to the women of my family because my mother was taking me to her native Palestinian village during my whole childhood. And I was always surrounded by the presence of these women, my seven aunts, my grandmother, my great-grandmother. I always felt like I received a lot of love from them and a lot of culture, um, uh, which 
enriched my imagination, my imaginary, my, my perception of the world. I consider them heroes of their story, which for, for me, each of their story is, is epic. So I always look up to them and try to honor them by being inspired by the, what they left. And in the film, I wanted to allow their memory to become eternal and for them to find their place in the world again. Mm. And here in the film, we learn that you left your village of Deirhana to pursue your career as an actress here in Europe in theatre and then cinema. You've pursued photography. You've directed films like Héritage, notably. You've played Marsha Roy in the HBO series A Succession more recently. But to a certain extent, leaving your family behind and uprooting yourself was the price to pay for all of that. How do you feel about it today? I mean, it's just like a pain that lives really in, in you. You know, like once you're wounded, the wound is uh, heals, but like the memory of it uh, sometimes just wakes up in your body physically. Uprooting is not really something very easy for people, but I think as well this kind of work that we are doing, that Lena had done in this movie, it's something that heals, something that brings humanity back to the surface of everything and makes us as well feel happy that we could exist in this space of time because we're trying to fight in reality and on Earth for some other space that we're, we cannot we cannot get right now. So yeah, this is how I feel really about it. It's just like a motivation, but it just brings me a lot of positivity these times rather than just closing my eyes on the sadness and the pain of it. Hmm. And, and Lina, in the film, you say that you wanted to preserve the memory of a place that was always under threat, that could disappear at any moment. I get the impression that you wanted to freeze those home videos, your childhood memories, but also there's a link to Palestinian history more globally, I think. D does this film feel m more urgent since the recent events in the region? Um, I was When I started writing the film, I had in mind the dehumanization that Palestinians were facing in the public discourse, in the media, and it was really important for me to give back to each of the women in the film their complexity, their full humanity, and allow them to exist in their full authenticity to also um, counter the stigma, the stigma that Palestinians face. But at the same time, I knew it wasn't only a story of transmission from woman to woman or from woman to daughter. All these stories of the women of my family echo the collective memory and the collective story of Palestinians, which is a people that is constantly bound to reinvent itself as it is deprived of its rights and denied in its identity and not recognized in its history. So for me, the intimate and the collective are really, really imbricated. I never considered that it was only an intimate story or only a collective story. It's really um, the balance between both. So of course, with everything happening now, it's, it only resonates even more, even though it's not new for us. Um, but it, it allows to give back humanity at a time where we feel more dehumanized than ever. And with all the disappearance that is happening in Gaza, it's not only lives that are killed and destroyed, it's also families that are destroyed and eliminated. It's a culture, it's a language, it's tradition, it's enrichness, uh, it's art, it's uh, archives. So for me, having a film that allows us to exist beyond disappearance is very important because if we disappear, our films will always exist to remember us. Mm. And, and speaking of Gaza, Hiyama, you worked recently on the film uh, Gaza Mon Amour with the Nasser brothers. Uh, not only a love story, but a love letter to that very uh, place. Despite the setting, you couldn't actually film there due to the blockade uh, on the Gaza Strip. And when we think of Gaza today, our image is one of destruction, of conflict, of tragedy. Do you think we've reached a point now of uh, no return? You know what, it's, you are right, and it's really very hard and very tough to accept whatever is happening in Gaza and to kind of like, you know, just turn the, your, your, your eyes away from it. Uh, but I just, although it's sad and at times I do lose hope, I just like want to hope really. Like despite, you know, this despair, I think I want to find the hope somewhere. Maybe naively I'm just thinking this. But I really do, as a human being, want to trust humanity that would take over. And I really hope it would happen. Mm.
And coming back to uh, your career in cinema, Alina, your previous film, uh, There Algeria, focuses on your paternal grandparents, Aisha Mabrouk, who came to uh, France uh, more than uh, 60 years ago. Also a story of uprooting, exile, family history, which is also part of history with a capital H. What sort of parallels do you see between these two sets of grandparents? Um, for me, I always think of the difference before the parallel because... When I started there, Algeria, I had to face a silence. Uh, my grandparents uh, from Algeria immigrated in the 50s to France, and the uprooting was so difficult to, to live and to face, and the pain was so hard that they kind of closed themselves in silence to survive, and so they passed on their story through silence. While in my Palestinian family, um, we survive through telling our story. But in both films, I explore how transmission has been affected by colonization, exile, and displacement, how the pain of uprooting exists and it's trans is transmitted through generations. And it was also a way for me in both films to give back their place in the world to each member of my family who come from stories that are either not told, either silenced, either marginalized. So it was important for me to capture their memory and to allow them to exist in the public space, to give them back their place in the world and in the, in the history of these different countries. Mm, and bringing those uh, stories to a wider audience through cinema. Well, thank you very much, both of thank you. you. Thank you. Today. We'll wrap up the show with another new release at the cinema here in France. This is a story of childhood, of secrets, and of the wounds within a family and in Moroccan society. It's called The Mother of All Lies. Here's a preview. Otherwise, you can get more arts and culture on our website and our social media channels. See you here next time. Yeah, she has no one help.